the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. The light of Christ. With full hearts and minds and voices, we give thanks and praise, O God, almighty creator of heaven and earth. For in Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, you have delivered us from sin. Lord God, how deep is your love for us! How great is your faithfulness and mercy! You sent your Son to save us from captivity. Now, on this holy night, you gather us to celebrate Christ rising from the dead. Rejoice, heavenly powers, sing, choirs of angels. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. This is the night of our Passover feast, when the blood of Christ, the true Lamb, consecrates the homes of all believers. This is the night when you saved our ancestors, delivering the children of Israel from slavery, and leading them through the sea on dry land. This is the night when Christians everywhere, washed clean from sin and set free from evil, are restored to grace and renewed in holiness. This is the night when Jesus Christ broke free from the prison of death and rose triumphant from the grave. This is the night that is as bright as the day, shining with your glory, O God, and with the light of the Lamb. This is the night that dispels all wickedness, washes guilt away, restores lost innocence, and brings joy to those who mourn. This is the night that casts out hatred, brings peace to all people, and humbles earthly pride. This is the night of the great marriage feast when heaven is wedded to earth and we are reconciled to you, O God. Gracious God, in the joy of this night, receive our evening sacrifice of praise for the light of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Let this candle, fed by the wax of the bees, be our pillar of fire in the darkness, a flame that is divided as we share its light, but never diminished or extinguished. May Christ, the morning star that never sets, find the flame of faith still burning in our hearts, for our Lord and Savior has risen from the dead. Now the light of Christ will shine throughout creation, for he is alive and will reign with you forever. Rejoice, heavenly powers. Sing, choirs of angels. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. Amen. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. Over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. Let there be light. And there was light. There was light. God saw that the light was good. The light was good.
Three, the, two, one. The Molesberries, the Molesberry family is go, going to show you Noah's Ark. After Adam and Eve left the garden, many people were born. The people kept doing bad things. Give me your money. And they forgot about God. Except Noah. Noah loved God. Stop stealing his money. Here, you can have a bat. Give him back his money. God was sad that everyone but Noah forgot about him. God told Noah about his plan to start over. Here's a hammer to build an ark. And here's the instructions to build an ark. You are the best man on the planet. So Noah and his family began working on the ark. When it was done, God said, Take your family and two of every animal into the ark. Animals creeped, crawled, hopped, and galloped onto Noah's new boat. After everyone was inside... No, everybody's not inside. Oh, we need two monkeys. After everyone was Wait. in... No, Grayson. After everyone was inside, the rain began to fall. I want to get some day. <laughs> and fall. And fall. The ark rocked this way. Whoa! And the ark rocked Whoa! that way. Rise on the rising water. Finally, the rain stopped. After 40 days and 40 nights. Water covered everything. Everyone inside the ark was safe. Noah and his family were very happy. Yay! Yay! Oh, hey! One day, Noah sent a dove to find land. It flew and flew, but never found any, so it came back. One week later, Noah sent the dove out again. This time, it brought him an olive leaf. <laughs> Noah cheered. Yay! Oh! We found him again! The ark finally came to rest on the top of a mountain. God told Noah to leave the ark. Noah and his family praised God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. God put a beautiful you, rainbow in the sky. It was a sign of his promise to never flood the world again. The end. <laughs>
Do not be afraid. And stand firm and see the deliverance for the Egyptians you see today, you shall never see again. Then the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. You lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it so that the Israelites may go on dry ground. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by large wind and turned the sea into dry ground and the waters were divided. The Israelites went in to the ocean on dry ground after them and the, and the Egyptians went after them. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so the water may come back over upon the Egyptians and their horses and their chariots. Chapter 30. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians. And Israel saw the, the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, verses 1 through 14, in which the prophet encounters the Spirit of the Lord in a valley of dry bones. Hear the word of the Lord. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and he set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God.
Hey FPC family, happy Easter from the Sheets family. Today we're going to be telling the story from Daniel 3 about the fiery furnace. Um, all the parts in this will be uh, played by Oliver. So Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, King Nebuchadnezzar, you're going to see a two-year-old playing all of them. Um, there's some guest stars featuring action figures from uh, Disney's PJ Masks. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the story of the fiery furnace. King Nebuchadnezzar made a golden statue whose height was 60 cubits and whose width was 6 cubits, and he set it on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Now, there's a lot of details that are going to come next, but we're going to skip down to the part that gets us to the rest of our characters. King Nebuchadnezzar had a herald proclaim about the statue. You are commanded, O peoples, O nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, the pipe, the lyre, the trigon, the harp, the drum, and the entire musical ensemble, you are to fall down and worship the golden statue that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. So when all the people heard the sound of all of those instruments playing, they immediately bowed down in worship. But there was a few people, people who were Jewish, who did not, and there was a concern about them. So they set out to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to King Nebuchadnezzar so he could ask them for himself. So come on, Shadrach, come on, Meshach, come on, Abednego. So Nebuchadnezzar met these three Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and asked them point blank, is it true that you do not serve my gods and you do not worship the golden statue that I have set up? Now if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, the pipe, the lyre, the trigon, the harp, the drum, and the entire musical ensemble, to fall down and worship the statue I have made, well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. And who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire, and out of your hand, O king, let God deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was so filled with rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face was distorted. He ordered the furnace heated up seven times more than customary and ordered some of the strongest guards in his army to bind them. When the guards threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fire, they were close enough to it that they were burned and that they died. But the three men fell down bound into the furnace. At that point, King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose quickly. Was it not three men that we drew bound in the fire? They answered the king, true, O king. He re replied, but I see four men unbound walking around in the middle of the fire and they are not hurt. And the fourth looks like a son of God. Nebuchadnezzar approached the fire and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come out, come here. So they came out of the fire. All of the governors and the king's counselors gathered together and saw the fire did not have any power over them. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered God's servants who trusted God. They disobeyed the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own. Therefore I make a decree, any people, nation, or language that utters blasphemy against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb from limb and their houses laid in ruins, for there is no other god who is able to deliver in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon the word of the Lord.
Jamie, and I'm going to read you the story of Jonah. One day, when Jonah was just minding his own business, God spoke to him. God said, Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh and tell those people that I know that they aren't living the way I want them to. I want them to change their ways. Jonah may have started with the right idea, but once he got started walking, Jonah began thinking about what a long way it was to Nineveh. Hmm, Jonah thought, I don't really want to go to Nineveh. I'll go the other way. God will never know. So Jonah walked and walked and walked all the way away from Nineveh. When Jonah got to the sea, Jonah paid to get onto a boat to take him even farther away. <sighs> Jonah yawned. Oh, that walking made me tired. I'm gonna go take a nap. Jonah curled up on a pile of rope and fell asleep. But God saw Jonah. Whoosh! God sent a strong wind that tossed the ship to and fro. The sailors were so afraid that they started throwing things overboard to make the ship lighter and save themselves. The sailors worried. What's going on? They woke Jonah up. God is mad at me for not listening. Jonah said, so throw me overboard. And they did. Suddenly the sea was calm again. Look out, Jonah. Here comes a big fish. Gulp, gulp, gulp. The fish swallowed Jonah. And Jonah sat inside the dark, smelly fish for three days and three nights. Jonah prayed, help me God, I'm sorry. Finally, the fish spat Jonah back out onto the beach. Trudge, trudge, trudge. Jonah went to Nineveh. He told the people what God said and they believed him and changed the way they were living. God was happy at that the people of Nineveh were now living as God wanted. The end. A reading from Romans, chapter 6, verse 3 through 11. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him knowing that christ having been raised from the dead dies no more death no longer has dominion over him for the death that he died he died to sin once for all but the life that he lives he lives to god likewise you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin but alive to god in christ jesus our lord
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. Gracious God, by water and the Spirit, you claimed us as your own, cleansing us from sin and giving us new life. You made us members of your body, the church, calling us to be your servants in the world. Renew in us the covenant you made in our baptism. Continue the good work you have begun in us. Send us forth from the power of your Holy Spirit to love and serve you with joy and to strive for justice and peace in all of the earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Surely you know that we're not going to miss this part of our Easter Vigil. Remember your baptisms! Remember your baptisms! Remember your baptisms! Remember your baptisms! <laughs> the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. And the peace of our Lord be with you all. Amen. to go tell Simon Peter and the disciple whom Jesus loved. They took Jesus and I don't know where they took him. Why do you cry? They took my master and I don't know where they put him. Why do you cry? If you know where they took him, tell me. Mary. Teacher. Don't cling to me. We need to be six feet apart. I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go to my brothers and tell them, I ascended to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. 